Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Vijay and I am a Microsoft MVP in SharePoint. In today's video, we are going to discuss about SharePoint communication side versus team side. So there is always a confusion whether we should create a team side or a communication side. Now in this video, we are going to discuss why we should choose team side. So we will first see what are the scenarios that uh, we should create a team side and then why uh, we should create a SharePoint communication site and then we will see the difference between these two so for this what I have done is I have already written a complete article on the same so I have explained everything so let me just open that and then we will go through that and then I'll put the link in the video description you can have a look at that as well so if you look here this is the complete article I was talking about so now let's first understand why we should uh, choose a team site so as the name suggests this team site so that means this will be for uh, the teams so teams means when we are saying teams imagine in your organization there are there will be a lot of teams so you so few people or few team are working on this project maybe one team will be working on another project now when you talk about uh, the team so that is about a project team or uh, something some of the team which that they are working for for, for particular that project so for those things you can create a uh, team sites now in that so basically you can collaborate with all the members in the team you can track the status you can uh, exchange ideas you can share documents you can upload documents and this that will be within your team now let me uh, give you another example for example let's say there is a development team and in that development team uh, you you are having development on Python, you are having development on SharePoint, you are having development in Azure. So all these different areas are there. So maybe one team is working on Python, one team is working on SharePoint, one team is working on Azure. Now you can create three separate sites for them, your team sites, so that your um, documents related to your SharePoint should be there in one place or in one site and then only who are responsible or who are working in that particular project then they should be able to access it so same way with, with for uh, Python as well as for your other uh, uh, team like your Azure so that that uh, that, uh, that based on that you can basically create uh, team sites so based on your user permission so in this a particular in a team site everyone will have the edit or view document so that means anyone can update the document anyone can share with uh, you know others so if they want so that is what is the uh, purpose of the team site but in those cases if you'll see it will not be available for other users who are not part of that team so uh, so that that's how we restrict it or we can only give access to that particular uh, member so in this case your team members will be able to collaborate with each other now in a mid or in a large size companies let's say uh, you are uh, having an organization having 500 people or you know um, 5000 people so in those case you might have you will see that in your office 365 tenant or your microsoft 365 tenant if you open your sharepoint you might see there are a lot of team sets why because uh, Imagine if the if the, you have 500 uh, you know people are working in a in a in a company. So how many teams will be there? How many uh, projects will be running? So in those all the, those cases, you have to create separate separate sites for them, so that you don't want uh, you know one team will access the information of or the documents of another team, which they are not supposed to. So in this case, you can secure your project information from other team members, and also um to manage the sites let's say in your company there are uh, let's say 50 uh, uh, team sites you have created now 50 team sites you will assign to maybe 50 different site owners who will be responsible for that let's say in their team if someone is joining if someone is leaving the organization then they will be responsible for adding the permission or or to share the site with them or uh, they will see what permission they want and then they will give that so this way you can manage all your team sites your site owners will be able to manage it and all your members will have access to the site so based on that you can you can decide uh, what access you want to give so you can give that at the same time also Microsoft allows you to uh, share with external users now I have written an article on that you can see here how we can enable how we can do that but just to quickly tell 
uh, you should not enable external user access like this on on the same site the best practices is if you really want your external users to see this information of the documents then better is you create a separate site collection and use or the site and you share with them because here if knowingly or unknowingly someone let's say share a document library where your uh, you know your uh, confidential documents are there or your client information are, are there then that is not good for your client or your reputation so there will be a problem on that so make sure that you you should not uh, give uh, you know you should not enable external sharing over there if information is you know you want it to be secure or you want it to be within your organization and let's see if you a few uh, you know examples of the scenarios where you should go for a team site now let's say you have departments you have hr you have finance you have it your marketing so for all of them you can create different different site collection you, or the sites you should not uh, when i'm saying site means i'm talking about the team site because you want your marketing to people should see only your marketing data you don't want uh, they should uh, they should have access to the finance data so that way you can create a team site so that only your team members will be able to access it that's one scenario and maybe let's say your uh, team is very big or it's a very uh, you know global organization in that case uh, maybe for your hr team you can create separate uh, uh, team sites for your let's say hr usa canada or uk you can create three different uh, sites and team sites and then you can uh, so that you can restrict uh, or you can um, you can only uh, that site will be available to people who are sitting in the usa uh, those hr people so that way you can think of and another one is the projects let's say you are an it company uh, or some uh, that you are providing services uh, you have you might have you know a 15 20 30 30 projects must have been running in your organization so you can create separate or uh, team sites uh, for each of the projects so that only project who are working on project a they should having access to that project uh, documents they should not have access to other documents so in that case you can uh, secure you can secure your uh, thing things on that so this is these are the scenarios where you can uh, uh, create team sites uh now um, i have also put some links where you can go and uh, see how we can create a team site i'll show you that also a little bit now before going to the communication site let me just tell you if you are interested to learn sharepoint i have a sharepoint development training here you can see there are 23 modules are there module wise everything you will get in this particular uh, url i'll put this link in the video description you can see here and there are module wise everything i have added on this including power platform spfx all these things are there so if you are interested you can go ahead and check this out now let's see the communication site now when we require to uh, um, create a communication site so communication site where you want to share information within with uh, your entire organization uh, with a large audience let's say for example your it team uh, let's say people are joining they will ask for laptop and all these things so maybe they will your it team will say that we want to share this information that this has been changed or uh, you know this policy has been added or maybe your hr people let's say they want to communicate something let's say some some hr policies they are going to introduce so maybe they will create a, a communication site you will share on, they will share on that so that kind of uh, in those scenarios this is not no no specific to any team that is for the entire organization now in this case if you can see here if you want to showcase something let's say you are a product company you are releasing a product so maybe for a demo you you want to showcase something so you can create a site for that communication site so or if you want to share some uh, news about your ceo about your company performance maybe for those reasons you can create a communication site where you want to share with a large audience rather than a particular team so ideal scenario if you if you want to share your corporate news events those things then you can create a communication site uh, your hr policies for these things if your hr people want something because those policies should be uh, should uh, should be there for all employees so in this case you can create this and uh, apart from that let's say 
in your company IT equipment so something is there uh, they want to share information with uh, the entire organization then you can create communication site so uh, overall if you'll see for large audience if you want to share you don't want to invite anyone to um, uh, to that so then in that, those scenarios you, sh you should go for a communication site if you want for a particular team let's say we are working on xyz client for that uh, there is a development project then probably we'll create a team site and we'll upload the documents anything required in that so we'll only having 10 people who are working in this project will have access to that now let's see a couple of differences on that so the team site i will also show you for how we can create it team site or communication site and what are the options are appearing i'll show you that but before that you can see here uh, this team site uh, it's specific to a particular team or a workbook where your communication sites are for the entire organization okay and in this case all members will have create or edit permission uh, to the content but here if you'll see a few people will update the information or publish the information and it will be available to a large audience so that is what uh, the consumer base is very much here rather than the uh, the user who will create the content and another major difference is when you will create a team site it is by default private so if you want to invite someone then you have to give access to that particular site but in this case communication site it is public so once you publish the content that will be available to all the users there is no restriction on that on, on your organization obviously and then when you will create a, a, a team site you will work with office 365 groups you can also use SharePoint groups but it will create behind the scene it will create office 365 group but for communication site you will have only SharePoint groups and by default external sharing is enabled in SharePoint team site but uh, you can disable it you can disable it at the site level uh, in your in your organization level also you can disable it and uh, in communication site it is by default disabled only it is it will be available within your organization but again you can also enable uh, the external sharing for the communication site at the, uh, if you are a SharePoint admin and also uh, there is one more difference uh, by default when you will create a team site uh, there will be left navigation so um, typical team site it will be having a left navigation let me just open it one here i will just show you so if you will see here now let's say this is a this is a site here so this is you can see here here the left navigation is there so in case of a communication site your top link will be there top link top navigation and you can create subsite in team site but there is no concept of subsite in the communication site another one is when you will create a team site you will get some other things like you will get a share calendar you will get a office 365 group email address you will you will get a uh, one note a notebook you will get a shared mailbox you will get a, uh, if you have while creating if you want you can also connect to a microsoft teams so that uh, it will it will you can see if you will open the microsoft teams you will see a team created over there but in communication site you will get just only a sharepoint site on that so this is uh, the difference between a sharepoint uh, communication site and a team site so in the admin center creating the steps are very simple you can go over create and then you have two options uh, team site and communication site if you will click on team site you can see here there is a site name group owner who will be the group owner uh, and then uh, the email address uh, sorry the language and then I was talking about so you can see here by default it is private but if you want you can make this as a public as well so once you make it public so anyone can access it so that you have to understand so if you are really wants to create a uh, for a particular team then you should not create as uh, public it should it should be always private and then have some description time zone and size so once you click on next then it will ask you to add additional owners members who are who wants to be a part of this but if you will select public then it will not ask so that's what is about the uh, team site which is a group connected team site so behind the scene uh, there will be a group will be created now the other one is if you will try to create a communication site I'll select a communication site here you can see on this site name uh, first of all you have to choose this topic showcase and blank so topic you can see here uh, uh, the preview similarly if you will show a showcase it will come like this if you will select a blank you can see like this so only thing is the design is there 
uh, even if you, you can create a blank you can add then the web part so you can make like this uh, but in this case if you'll see here there is no security things it is not asking whether it is private or public you can simply give the site name owner the language and then uh, choose the time zone description there is it is not asking you on other things like privacy or it is not it will not ask you to add members those things because uh, this is a communication site and by default everyone will having access to that so this is how you can uh, also create team site or communication site this is what a team site looks like let me just open a communication site i will show you how a communication site looks like so i just created a communication site as ts info and you can see here this is how a communication site looks like uh, this is you can see here top link uh, navigation there is no left navigation here so you will see the top navigation in this case so this is how we can uh, we saw the difference between a, a team site and a communication site and if you want similar kind of videos then subscribe to the youtube channel and you will get a lot of free videos on office 365 sharepoint um, your spfx power platform everything you will get it free so thank you and have a nice day